All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks to you for joining us and welcome to the Southern Africa Food Security Outlook Briefing for the October 2023 to May 2024 period. I'm Benjamin Davies, a senior food security analyst uh, at FuseNet, and I'm joined by Laura Levins, uh, food security analyst as well. Uh, Laura will be covering the regional overview, and then I'll be covering the areas of concern. So with that, I'll hand it over to Laura. Great. Thank you, Benja. Good morning, everybody. Uh, starting off with our regional overview. Um, so first, I'll present our key messages uh, for the October to, to May 2024 period, uh, followed by a regional overview. And then Benja will come back and present uh, our areas of concern in Malawi and Zimbabwe. So if we're looking at our seasonal calendar, uh, we have October through May outlined in blue here. So right now the rainy agricultural season is ongoing along with the typical lean season. Um, from October through January, households in Southern Africa are typically engaging in planting activities. Uh, and this is a, often a really important source of income for households. Additionally, the Malawi winter harvest and the wheat harvest are also taking place from October to January. Around April and May is when the main harvest is occurring along with the start of tobacco and coffee sales. Um, it should also be noted that in the DRC, the cassava harvest is ongoing year round, which you can see in the bottom row. Next slide. So our key messages. So crisis out IPC phase three outcomes are expected through May, 2024 in areas affected by conflict, localized weather shocks in 2023, weak and unstable economies and the impacts of El Nino related rainfall deficits during the 2023-24 rainfall season. The areas of greatest concern include Eastern DRC, Southern Malawi, Southern and Western Zimbabwe, Southern Mozambique and Southern Madagascar. Conflict remains a main driver of food security in Eastern DRC and Mozambique where population displacement is high and disruptions to household livelihoods and market activities are significant. Uh, the start of the 2023-24 rainy season has been mixed with average to above average rainfall in October and largely below average rainfall in November. Households are currently in the process of preparing land and planting. An erratic start to the rainy season is expected to result in below normal labor demand for land preparation and planting activities, with a similar trend expected in early to mid-2024 due to the anticipated below average 2024 harvest. Um, stable food prices are seasonally rising in most markets and prices remain higher than last year and the five-year average. In Malawi, Zimbabwe, and DRC, local currency instability and depreciation are, are driving price increases in local currencies, which is negatively affecting household purchasing power and access to food. In Malawi, in particular, macroeconomic conditions are volatile following a sharp decline in the value of the Malawian kwacha, which is impacting household purchasing power. In Zimbabwe, while most of the informal economy is operating in US dollars and the South African rand, um, households earning in Zimbabwean dollars are the most affected by high currency exchange rates. Well, moving on to our current situation. So the ongoing strong El Nino is most likely to reach peak intensity in late 2023 before dissipating by mid 2024. Uh, we're expecting below average rainfall across much of Southern Africa with a 30 to 40 percent chance, which is indicated in yellow, and a 40 to 50 percent chance indicated in orange, of rainfall that's likely to be in the lowest 20 percent of climatology, um, which is based on the C3S model. Um, for perspective, that represents about a doubling of the odds for low rainfall, extremely low rainfall, um, compared to one, what one would typically expect. So the various weather shocks during the 2022-2023 agricultural season resulted in mixed harvest across the region. Uh, there was a bumper harvest though, the second largest on record in fact, in the Maize Triangle of South Africa. However, hot and dry conditions in the western parts of the region 
and the impact of Cyclone Freddy in the eastern parts of the region resulted in poor maize harvests in parts of southern Zimbabwe, southern Mozambique, and southern Malawi. In the region, wheat harvesting continues under generally favorable conditions in Zimbabwe, Zambia, South Africa, and Lesotho, and the season will conclude in November and December. In South Africa, wet conditions during the winter supported production over the winter rainfall region, rainfall season, and provided sufficient water supply over the irrigated interior. Uh, forecasted drier conditions for the remainder of the season are expected to support harvesting activities. Uh, the planting of main season cereals is currently just beginning in Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Eswatini, and Lesotho. Uh, and initial conditions in October, as seen on the right, were favorable. So the above average harvests in South Africa and Tanzania are supporting above average region, regional maize supplies during the current marketing year, which is ex, uh, estimated at about 6% above last year and 9% above the five-year average. Uh, during the ongoing marketing year, the Southern Africa region, which is typically self-sufficient in maize, is expected to maintain a minor surplus. Uh, this has certainly helped stabilize maize prices, although they do remain higher than last year and the five-year average across many markets in the region. So prices across the region are mixed. Uh, there's a lot of regional and local market dynamics that are impacting prices. Um, so we'll go through a few of them just here. So in the top left, we have maize grain prices in South Africa. Um, we can see that prices uh, in September of this year, which is indicated by the green line, are lower than the prices last year indicated with the orange dots. Uh, but they are higher, uh, markedly higher than the five-year average, which is indicated by the tan columns. Um, if we look at Malawi in the bottom right, um, we can see prices are well above last year and the five-year average. Um, this is largely driven to due to the impact of Cyclone Freddy on last year's harvest, as well as ongoing poor macroeconomic uh, conditions. In the bottom left in Mozambique, we can see that prices are slightly higher than last year and the five-year average. Uh, and that's driven by increasing demand as the lean season begins. This is seasonal. In Madagascar, um, local rice, um, as, afforded, as opposed to imported rice, um, is really the key staple. Um, and, we can, and that's in the upper right. Um, but we can see that while local rice prices are a bit elevated above the previous averages, they are generally following seasonal trends. So across the region, an effective start to the rainy season can really range from October, which is indicated kind of by the blue colors, um, into November, which is indicated in green, or even in as late as December, um, indicated as orange. So as of November 20th, an effective start to the rainy season has yet to occur, or is at least one decade late in Zimbabwe, southern and central Mozambique, and southern Madagascar. Um, across the rest of the region, an effective start to the rainy season has ranged from about one to two decades early to normal to even a decade late. Um, so it's pretty mixed at the moment. However, uh, the current strong El Nino suggests that parts of the region may experience below average seasonal rainfall through early 2024, um, which may negatively influence both planted area and crop performance. So in October, uh, rainfall, like I said, was pretty mixed across the region with below average rainfall uh, indicated by the warmer orange and red colors um, that occurred across mus much of the western parts of southern Africa and uh, above average rainfall indicated by the greens and blues across much of the east. Um, however, in November, dry spells have started to lead to growing deficits with rainfall well below the 40 year average across much of Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Malawi, Southern and Western Madagascar, as you can see in the graphic on the right. So these deficits that have started accumulating in November are leading to some of the driest conditions on record in Southern and Western Zimbabwe and Western Madagascar. Um, and there are some localized areas of Mozambique and Malawi also affected, which is indicated by uh, the red coloring. Moving on to 
the ongoing macroeconomic conditions in the region. Um, so conditions are mixed. Um, annual inflation rates are really ranging anywhere from you know five to eight percent in Lesotho, um, in Mozambique, South Africa, um, and Madagascar, to around forty percent um, in DRC, uh, as shown in the table on the left. Um, if we look at trends uh, shown by the graphic on the right, we can see inflation in Malawi, which is indicated by the brown line, has remained uh, quite high over the last year, despite declining slightly since August, along with inflation in DRC, um, which is indicated by the green line. That's been increasing from around 10% in October of last year to around 40% this past August. Um, inflation rates in Angola, uh, which is the blue line, have also been increasing since June. Um, however, in Zimbabwe, which is the red line going across the screen, uh, inflation has declined to around 18%. Although we should note that the, the methodology used to calculate inflation in Zimbabwe is a bit different and has some commodities in US dollars and other commodities using um, Zimbabwean dollars. So it's kind of a blended methodology. Um, but in general, across the rest of the region, inflation rates have stayed largely stable over the last year. Uh, another driver for high prices in the region are also high fuel prices. In South Africa, uh, diesel prices have declined to late 2021 prices, which has lowered transportation costs. However, the high fuel prices we're observing in Malawi, Mozambique, DRC, and Zimbabwe are likely going to keep transportation costs high, with those costs being then passed on to consumers as staple foods began to travel through markets locally and regionally. Another key driver of acute uh, food insecurity in the region is conflict, uh, particularly in Mozambique and DRC. So starting off with Mozambique, uh, there has been a decline in the number of conflict events, uh, but they are ongoing in the northeastern part of Cabo Delgado, as you can see in the figure on the right. Um, with, with the decline in conflict events, displaced households are beginning to return home in order to better access food and reestablish access to their typical livelihoods. According to IOM DTM, the top three districts hosting returnees in August, which was when the most recent assessment was done, are Mosimba da Praia, Palma, and Moidumbe, um, despite this area still recording conflict events. As people began to return home, the number of IDPs has declined since November 2022, with around 850,000 IDPs remaining displaced in Cabo Delgado, with around 571,000 returnees by August 2023. Uh, the number of IDPs has likely continued to decline with the ongoing return of households to their places of origin. According to a rapid food security assessment in August, FuseNet found that families mostly depended on their own production, with IDPs largely dependent on humanitarian food assistance. The harvesting of some crops produced in low-lying areas with sufficient moisture is ongoing, including vegetables and maize from the second season. Local markets remain well supplied, and the prices of most basic products are relatively stable, except for maize grain, which has been increasing. Many poor households are involved in income generating activities to earn money from market purchases, uh, particularly small businesses, such as selling food products, firewood, charcoal, and artisanal products, such as mats, sieves, and baskets. So the ongoing conflict in Eastern DRC, um, the security situation remains precarious, um, particularly in North Kivu and Ituri provinces. Um, this conflict continues to cause new population displacements and significantly disrupt household access to food and income. So the M23 rebellion is ongoing in North Kivu province. Uh, the Congolese government continues to reject negotiations with M23. Um, so as of, uh, according to OCHA, 2.4 million displaced people in North Kivu um, are, are currently 2.4 million IDPs in North Kivu, of which over a million are newly displaced and just over 500,000 have returned within the last six months. Uh, if we look at the graphic on the right, which just shows the trend in the number of weekly conflict events over the last several months, we can see that conflict levels are generally trending slightly upward. Um, and you can see the dotted trend line indicating that just to make it a little easier to see. 
So this continued violence is going to likely reduce household access to their fields and then lead to further in decreases in agricultural production during the upcoming season, which is only going to further erode livelihoods. And uh, notably in the Rutshuro territory of North Kivu, the lean season began even earlier than in other parts of the region as part of household production was actually forcibly requisitioned by the M23 rebel administration, um, which further constrains household and market supplies. Um, house, high fuel prices are also um, contributing to lower household food access. Um, due to a striking oil traders, um, fuel prices have actually risen by 100% compared to last year, which has also compounded um, inflationary pressure on food prices. Moving on to our key assumptions. Um, so staple food prices are expected to be moderated by the good 2023-24 market supply, but high fuel prices and local supply and demand dynamics are going to keep prices high compared to last year and the five-year average. Um, so we present here uh, price projections for three key markets in the region, uh, starting off on the left with white maize and for the Ranfontaine in South Africa. Um, in general, prices are projected to be slightly below last year's average. Um, by contrast, in Malawi, white maize prices are expected to remain quite high and well above um, both the five-year and the last year's average. Um, meanwhile, Madagascar uh, prices are for uh, local rice are expected to trend just right above last year's average, um, but then they're going to dip below last year's average as off-season rice is harvested in central and southern Madagascar between December and January. Some other key assumptions, um, an erratic start to the 2023-24 rainy season is expected to result in below normal labor demand during land preparation and planting with a similar trend likely to occur during the harvest in 2024. Poor households are expected to continue to pursue or expand other income earning opportunities. Many households are likely to continue to engage in negative coping strategies to minimize food consumption gaps amid high staple food prices and limiting per limited purchasing power. Food prices are anticipated to remain elevated due to the anticipated below average harvest and an atypical increase in imported maize amid weak and unstable economies. The population in need of humanitarian assistance across Southern Africa will remain high through early 2025. Uh, seasonal improvements in food security outcomes associated with the harvest in April and May are expected to be short-lived across much of the region as household and locally produced market stocks will decline atypically early. Looking at our projected food security outcomes here on the left um, for the October to January period, should say January 2024. Um, as So the lean season is ongoing and households are beginning to depend on uh, market purchases um, increasingly as their household stocks are becoming exhausted. Um, worst off areas in Eastern DRC, Southern Malawi, Zimbabwe, and Southern Madagascar are expected to experience crisis IPC phase three outcomes during this period. As we move further into the lean season through February um, and even into March in some zones, um, we're also expecting these crisis outcomes to continue as households struggle to meet their minimum kilocalorie needs. Um, though outcomes are expected to improve as harvesting begins, depending on the zone between February and April. So now looking long-term um, and also considering other events that could change the scenario. Uh, on this slide, you see the period of highest concern for Southern Africa regarding the impact of the El Nino on agricultural and livestock production will likely be from around mid-2024 onwards. Uh, as the likely below average 2024 harvest, particularly for rain-fed agricultural areas in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Angola, and Southern Malawi, as that begins to deplete, along with uh, anticipated seasonal declines in pasture availability. Poor households uh, can typically withstand one bad rainfall season. However, the household co coping capacity in those areas is already limited due to successive weather shocks over the last six years, 
and the 2023 crop production was already below average in southern Mozambique, southern Zimbabwe, and southern Malawi. Um, so be, uh, in addition to those concerns about widespread drought, uh, damage from a cyclone that makes landfall could also worsen um, anticipated outcomes as that season begins uh, this month. Finally, food assistance needs in Southern Africa in 2024 are expected to be generally similar to 2023, but higher than past years, with over 20 million people expected to be in need of food assistance. Net stability in needs from 2023 to 24 is attributed to relative improvement in some of the other drivers of acute food insecurity, which is expected to offset the impacts of this El Nino event on total regional food assistance needs. However, needs remain high and long-term trends suggest needs can continue to increase significantly in the year after a strong El Nino event, as was observed in 2017 following El Nino-induced crop losses in the 2016 harvest. While the ongoing El Nino is not anticipated to be as severe as the one in 2015 or 16, FuseNet expects that it is highly likely that regional needs will rise to even higher levels in the first quarter of 2025, which coincides with the peak of the next lean season in 2024-25. And moving on to our areas of concern with Benja presenting. Thanks, Thank Laura. You. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'll now move on to our areas of concern, starting with Malawi. So to give a little bit um, context on the livelihood, uh, and in particular, the importance of maize in Malawi, uh, we're going to use an example from Livelihood Zone 4, the Lake Chilwa Falombe Livelihood Zone, um, as indicated, which is shown on the figure on the, on the far right. Um, here, most very poor households typically only grow around 50% of their annual kilocalorie needs. And you can see this on the figure on the on the far far left, which is showing the percent of annual kilocalorie needs from own pro crop production. Um, so as you can see here, the uh, maize, which is indicated by the yellow color, is um, showing that it is a significant source of household kilocalories. Um, additionally, very poor and poor households also spend most of their expenditures on maize grain. And you can see this in the in the middle figure, um, which is highlighting annual expenditure on food in the livelihood zone. And maize grain is um, shown in the light lighter green uh, color. Overall, this indicates that a decline in production or an increase in food prices will have a significant impact on very poor households to meet their food needs. So when we look at the start of the 2023-2024 the rainy season, um, rainfall in southern Malawi was cumulatively average to above average in October, as shown by the chirps pentadal data for precipitation uh, on the left. And here the red line is showing the 2000 to 2018 uh, mean rainfall. Um, the blue line is rainfall recorded in 2023-2024. Uh, the grain line is showing preliminary estimates by chirps, while the yellow is showing the um, anticipated GIFs forecast. With the below average rainfall in November, uh, cumulative de deficits are starting to emerge. Um, and these are deficits are around 10 to 50 millimeters um, at, with larger deficits in localized parts of the country. And you can see this um, on the figure on the, on the right, where the deficits are being shown in the lighter brown colors. However, um, in early November, the Malawian kwacha was devaluated uh, by 45%, and this was the second devaluation in 18 months, the first one occurring in May 2022. The central bank's objective um, here was to address the supply-demand balances in the currency market. However, the consequence of a weakened currency is the increased cost of imported goods, um, with these costs often transferred to consumers. Um, to date, uh, Malawi has been going through a fuel energy shortage, along with elevated fertilizer prices, as well as high inflation. Uh, following the devaluation, fuel prices um, in the country surged by 45%, reaching around six and a half US dollars per gallon. And uh, fertil fertilizer prices also increased by 30 to 40%. Uh, 
Um, although official food prices are not yet available, um, particularly like foods, foods, particularly staple foods like maize are likely to increase uh, due to the heightened production and transportation costs. And this will particularly impact poor households who are heavily reliant on labor employment as their wages are, are expected to lag behind the rising cost of essential food and non-food items. Additionally, the informal market is expected to operate at significantly higher rates than the formal market due to sustained demand for hard currency, which is going to present additional challenges for the overall economy. Additionally, um, a weaker currency is going to limit the government's capacity to import essential items like fertilizers and improved seeds, and then combined with the impact of the El Nino is expected to result in below average production amid likely rising staple food prices, which will exacerbate um, the number of individuals who will face food consumption gaps. Um, and this is expected to be most acute in the southern area regions, which are still impacted from past climatic disasters and are facing compound challenges in their recovery due to the ongoing uh, macroeconomic difficulties. Uh, moreover, in the near uh, term, middle and better off families are also likely to reduce their cultivable land and fertilizer use due to the high fertilizer prices and lack of improved seed, which will also reduce um, food production and limit labor opportunities. Um, overall, FuseNet will be closely monitoring the staple food prices, access to agricultural inputs, labor opportunities, as these factors are likely to significantly impact poor households and restrict their access to both food and income. So prior to the devalu devaluation, um, staple food prices, particularly maize, which you can see in the top left, were already well above prices last year. Um, and the price, current prices are shown in the green line and prices last year are the orange dots and the five-year average are the tan lines. Um, additionally, uh, the recent devaluation is expected to see food prices increase rapidly in the coming weeks. And we can see that rice a state, uh, substitute pro uh, was also um, well above prices last year in the five-year average while beans in the bottom left were similar to prices last year um, and cassava prices were similar to the five-year average but these were all prior to the devaluation so looking at some of the key drivers of the high maize prices we'll start off um, with uh, the, uh, the maize price projection, um, which was developed for the food security outlook prior to the devaluation. And this is shown by the figure on the left. And here, um, the price projection in showed that maize prices uh, were expected to follow seasonal trends, but already be around 120% higher than prices last year and around 250% higher than the five-year average. And some of the key drivers for the high maize prices include high demand of maize from processors, and low supply from the Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation, also known as ADMARC, lower than normal cross-border trade of imports and exports, and um, the below average 2023 harvest. Um, I'll also note that uh, based on a field assessment conducted in FuseNet in September, uh, the national maize stock in both local and agricultural development um, in the ADMARC markets has significantly decreased with uh, traders reporting access to less than half of their required stocks. Moreover, the National Food Reserve Agency held only around 56,000 metric tons in mid-October relative to their target of 217,000 metric tons, and the Department of Disaster Management Affairs estimated need of 164,000 metric tons for humanitarian assistance during the lean season. Um, in response to these challenges, the government has considered importing maize to fill the supply gaps, but foreign exchange shortages are limiting their capacity to do so. So looking at um, inflation, as Laura mentioned earlier, national inflation has remained high and has been fluctuating between 25 and 30 percent over the last year, which is shown in the figure on the right with the headline um, inflation shown in green, food inflation in orange, and non-food inflation in uh, purple. Um, according to the National Statistical Office, the rising inflation is primarily affecting food prices, um, and this is directly impacting many poor and very poor households as it diminishes their purchasing power and restricts their access to basic food items. Um, the low foreign exchange availability is also leading to the high inflation rates um, in Malawi, um, who depends on um, imports for most of their processed foods. Um, foreign currency reserves were estimated at 
to be um, forty percent lower compared to the same period last year, and falls below the minimum reserve levels recommended by the IMF. So another key driver was the below average uh, 2023 harvest. Um, in particular, um, damage from Cyclone Freddy uh, it resulted in failed crop production across much of southern Malawi, as shown um, by sh shown in the figure on on the left. Um, so in a recently con concluded irrigated crop production, um, sorry, in the rec the recently con concluded irrigated crop um, season was estimated to be about 35 to 40 percent below average at the national level and around 50 percent below average in southern Malawi due to damage to ir irrigable land and irrigation um, equipment uh, caused by its tropical cyclone Freddy earlier in the year um, and then concurrently land preparation for this upcoming 2023-2024 harvest is also underway um, adding to the uncertainty um, for this upcoming season is the slow implementation of the Affordable Inputs Program, AIP. Malawi is reported to currently have around 60% of the required fertilizer stock for AIP farmers, with a, while a shortage of foreign currency is causing uncertainty regarding the importance of an adequate supply of fertilizer. So in response to these challenges, in mid-October, the Ministry of Agriculture announced a reduction in the number of AIP beneficiaries, reducing it from 2.5 million to 1.5 million. And this reduction is expected to negatively affect agricultural production for the 2023-2024 season. So um, as, as part of this, an assessment conducted by Fusenet in September 2023, um, held in Falumbe and Nisanji districts, uh, confirmed reports of low maize supplies and elevated prices. Um, and these districts were chosen because they were among the most severely affected by tropical cyclone Freddy. Um, and then several factors um, contributed to this situation, um, and which has included uh, late fer arrival of fertilizers, um, a key component in maize production under the government-supported IP, and substantial maize production losses due to that cyclone, Freddie. Um, and what findings showed is that over 50% of the main harvest uh, was destroyed by cyclone Freddie, and farmlands were silted, which reduced cultivated land for winter production, which is, was that irrigated um, maize production. Um, additionally, some households had also already started engaging in negative coping mechanisms, like reducing meal sizes, as well as consuming wild foods. And some of these are shown by the photos on the right, where maize bran, which is um, often used as fodder, was beginning to, households were beginning to consume this as well. Um, households were beginning to harvest water lily bulbs, um, locally called Nkia, which translates as wild foods, and a photo of those are on the right. So looking forward to some of the key assumptions um, for this projection period, the 2023-2024 rainy season is expected to be cumulatively below average in southern Malawi due to the impact of the El Nino, with average to above average rainfall likely in central and northern Malawi. And this can be seen by the uh, NOAA C CPC NMME forecast on the on the right, which is showing the probability that rainfall will be below, near, or above average, with below shown in the orange to red colors, um, average in the white to gray, and above average uh, probability in um, green, blue to green. Uh, agricultural and non-agricultural labor income will also likely be below average due to reduced opportunities amid the poor seasonal outlook. The 2024 harvest is expected to be 20 to 30 percent lower than the five-year average. And then um, additionally, a, a market assessment by Fusenet in September suggests informal maize imports into Malawi will continue to rise as the lean period progresses. So as we look at projected food security outcomes um, for the projection um, period, the lean season is expected to start in November um, with crisis IPC phase three outcomes present in much of southern Malawi um, and the number of areas experiencing crisis IPC phase three outcomes is expected to increase through the projection period with areas of highest concern in Nisanje, Balaka, Mulanje and Falombe districts which suffered uh, severe crop losses due to the impacts of the cyclone. Um, as well, some of the worst affected households in southern Malawi are likely to be in emergency IPC phase four from October 2023 to January 2024. 
From February to March 2024, Southern Malawi will continue to experience crisis IPC phase three um, food security outcomes um, as the end of the lean season approaches. However, food security outcomes will start to improve to stressed IPC phase two around April and May for districts like Balaka, Mulanje, um, when households begin to harvest their crops and start accessing own produced foods. Um, overall, most households in central and northern Malawi will likely maintain none IPC phase one food security conditions, as most of these areas are expected to receive average rainfall, experience lower impacts of El Nino, and have access to average levels of agricultural labor to earn income for food and basic non-food needs. Uh, in the areas of highest concern, um, which are Nasanje, Balaka, Mulanje, and Falumbe districts, households will likely face crisis IPC outcomes um, from February to May 2024 due to the anticipated impact of the El Nino, localized dry spells, and below average cultivable areas. However, the main harvest does begin in April, and the households who are facing emergency IPC phase four are expected to transition to crisis IPC phase three due to increased availability of food from their own production. Overall, uh, projected the projected population in need of humanitarian assistance is expected to increase from October 2023 to March 2024, peaking between two and a half to three million people before declining with the start of the 2024 harvest in April and May. So that I'll then move to Zimbabwe. So the start of the 2023-2024 season um, was very mixed um, in October. Rainfall was largely average to above average across much of the country, which promoted households in rural, peri-urban and urban areas to begin clearing land, digging, conservation, um, agricultural basins, as well as hand plowing. However, the engagement rate and the area of land prepared was still relatively low as some farmers waited for an effective start to the rainy season and um, uh, and also in anticipation of the El Nino below average rainfall. So on the left here is showing uh, um, cumulative rainfall um, in October compared to the 40 year average. And we can see that rainfall was well above average across much of the country as shown by the, the green and blue uh, colors on the, on the map. Um, however, uh, in mid-October, um, the heavy rainfall um, was, as I mentioned, was cumulatively above average. Um, however, the Meteorological Services Department and the Ministry of Agriculture warned farmers against planting at that time, um, instead encouraging int intensification of land preparation as a dry spell was anticipated um, before the start of the rainy season in November. Um, Additionally, the 2023 winter harvest and barley harvest uh, recently was, was concluded and was estimated by the Ministry of Agriculture to be around 415,000 metric tons of wheat and 15,000 metric tons of barley. And, and this anticipated wheat harvest would then be 10% higher than last year as and a consecutive record of harvest. Um, at the start of the season, crop inputs, mainly seeds and fertilizers, were also available on the market, but purchases were very low ahead of the planting period, as most farmers couldn't afford the high prices. Um, in early October, the government suspended the duty on fertilizer imports to reduce prices and enhance affordability for farmers. However, the planting of irrigated tobacco did start on time in early September, with about 15,000 hectares reportedly planted by mid-October, which is around 8% higher compared to last year. Um, regarding the crop inputs, the government has announced plans to provide crop input assistance, seed and particularly seed and fertilizer for this upcoming agricultural season um, with, the, with the plans tailor-made according to agroclimatic zones. Um, the government plans to target three and a half million smallholder households, three million in rural areas and 500,000 in urban, peri-urban areas. Um, and distributions are ongoing. Um, the government also plans to assist targeted farmers with cotton in inputs with a target of 260,000 hectares split evenly between conventional and conservation farming. However, the government reportedly will only target farmers who have sold their co cotton to the government after receiving previous input assistance following a high rate of side marketing during the past marketing season. However, when we move into October, uh, we see that there are dry conditions beginning um, to emerge, uh, which are resulting in deficit, rainfall deficits of 25 to 50 millimeters compared to the 40 year average as seen by the brown uh, colors on the figure on the, on the left from the Climate Hazard Center. Um, additionally, some larger deficits of 
50 to 100 millimeters are beginning to emerge in southern and eastern parts of the country. That's shown by the darker brown colors. Um, the Chirps Pentadal rainfall graphs for Matabela land and Massavingo, as seen on the right, also highlight how the start of the rainy season has been mixed with average to above average rainfall in October and then dry conditions in November. So these dry conditions have led to some of the driest, um, con driest conditions being recorded in southern, western, and parts of eastern Zimbabwe, um, as shown by the maroon colors of the CHIRP season precipitation rank for October through December 5th. The dry conditions and very hot temperatures have primarily been impacting water availability. Um, and water availability is below normal in these low rainfall areas already after a longer than normal dry season. Um, however, nationally, dam levels are um, estimated to be above average, around 80% full, compared to an average of around 60% at this time of year. However, surface water sources, such as rivers and streams, are um, have dried up, while water tables and boreholes are fast receding in most semi-arid districts. Um, in most areas, boreholes are the main water source for domestic livestock and other livelihood uses, while dry stream bed, dry stream bed sand scooping for water is common in parts of, of the country. So um, in October, um, this was prior to the above average rainfall, uh, pasture conditions were, were mixed. Um, and we can see this um, through the satellite derived EVIR's Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, NDVI, which measures vegetation greenness as a proxy for vegetation health. Um, and overall, it, it was pasture uh, NDVI was showing that um, vegetation conditions were around 90 to slightly 90% of the long-term um, average to slightly above the long-term average. However, uh, key informants in the south and other semi-arid areas indicated that there was limited pasture with livestock browsing off bushes, um, and as well as mopane and acacia tree leaves. Um, and you can see this in the photo on the left, uh, which is showing, which was a photo taken in Masavingo present, uh, province in southeastern Zimbabwe. Um, from, and we got this photo from the Mwenzi district um, agricultural offices and overall showing relatively dry conditions despite um, it showing near average uh, NDVI. Um, in general, cattle body conditions are were fair to poor in typical low rainfall areas, affected also by limited access to veterinary care, while goats were generally in fair to good condition. Um, on, on the other hand, pasture conditions are um, are fair in typical high rainfall areas in, in northern um, Zimbabwe um, with cattle body conditions generally good to fair and goats in good condition. Um, commercial livestock supplementary feeds remain too expensive for most poor households and some households in affected areas are using stover as supplementary feed while in other areas cattle are being moved to better grazing lands. So following that heavy rainfall in October we saw that there was a, um, a green up of vegetation um, and you can see that very clearly in the figure on, on the right showing uh, NDVI through November where vegetation conditions are well above the 10-year average. However, this is expected to be short-lived due to the high temperatures and below average rainfall in, in November. Um, household and livestock access to water continues to decline across most typical semi-arid areas, uh, particularly in Western um, Zimbabwe, such as uh, Matabele land north and, and Matabele land um, south. And this is uh, negatively impacting water access for um, domestic livelihood and livestock uses. Um, relatedly, uh, li what pasture conditions are also lower than normal in these areas, which is negatively impacting uh, cattle body conditions. Um, although, although goats are remaining in fair fair condition, supported by available forage. However, I'll note that there are um, media reports more recently um, about concern for uh, drying up of water sources. Um, in particular, um, this is showing a photo in um, taken by Newsday um, in Matobo district in Matabele Land South, which was showing cattle trapped in muddy pools in Gohole Dam. Um, as households are seeking to uh, find water for their livestock. Um, 
and additionally, the, um, some media are reporting that households in some villages are beginning to fetch water from basins for their for their livestock. So, um, looking at some of the macroeconomic conditions in Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean dollar has been depreciating since August, um, and we can see this on the figure on the on the left showing the U.S. dollar to Zimbabwean dollar exchange rates. Um, at the end of October, the official and parallel markets were trading at around 5,700 and 7,600 per USD, respectively, a, a six and nine percent, around six and nine percent higher than what they were in September. Um, the Zimbabwean de de dollar depreciation has also resulted in the informal markets rejecting um, the 50 Zimbabwean dollar banknote, which is the second highest Zimbabwean dollar note in circulation. Um, these bills only remain acceptable now in formal uh, formal chain retail shops. Um, additionally, the premi premiums charged for transacting in Zimbabwean dollars using mobile and electronic modes continue to also increase. Um, the depreciation of the Zimbab Zimbabwean dollar has driven um, Zimbabwean dollar price increases for basic food and other commodities. Um, in October, the Zimbabwean dollar price of wheat and bread increased by 25%. Maize meal and rice increased by 20 and 15% respectively, and sugar and cooking oil rose by nearly 5%. However, it's important to note most households are increasingly operating in US dollars or South African Rand, especially in the informal sector. Available estimates suggest that over 80% of transactions are conducted in US dollars. Additionally, uh, poor households and even some middle and better off households increasingly depend on informal sector retailers and open markets who price their goods cheaper and almost exclusively in US, US dollars. And this can be seen in the figure on the right, which is showing the price of basic goods in US dollars in formal markets in Harare. Um, as you can see, they've been very stable. Um, and I'll note that prices in the informal markets um, are often typically lower than the formal market prices shown here. Um, additionally, in October, most formal retail markets noticeably started pegging prices in US dollars with Zimbabwean payments affected using prevailing interbank rates that allow for a maximum 10% premium. Um, additionally, um, at the end of October, the government extended the multi-currency regime to December 2023, allowing for the continued use of the US dollar in the economy. So looking now at some of the key assumptions, um, for the projection period. The 2024 main harvest is likely to be below average due to the impacts of the El Nino on rainfall as well as limited access to agricultural inputs. Um, the rainy season expected to be cumulatively below average. And you can see this by the high probability that rainfall will be below average through the remainder of the rainy season um, in the figure on the, on the right. Water challenges, especially in typical low rainfall areas um, are likely going to be compounded by ongoing macroeconomic challenges um, and will also likely drive below normal engagement in non-agricultural casual labor and self-employment. And then in April and May, the below average harvest will provide short-term improvements in household food access. And households are likely to try and expand income earning opportunities, but increased competition will negatively impact um, income. I'll also note that uh, historical trends indicate Domestic and international remittances to poor households often increase when there's a shock like an El Nino. However, poor households will likely receive less remittances as other household members in country or abroad, often South Africa, face poor macroeconomic conditions and high living costs. Um, an increasing proportion of households are likely to engage in or expand um, income opportunities from petty trade. Um, as, but as I said, the increased competition will negatively impact their income. Um, informal mining is expected to increase as a source of income for participating households, um, as well as the barter of livestock and other commodities for food is likely to increase, though terms of trade are expected to remain unfavorable for poor households. So moving on to projected food security outcomes. Um, from October to January, area level crisis, IPC phase three outcomes are expected to emerge across much of southern and western Zimbabwe as poor households in typical deficit producing areas increasingly engage in consumption coping strategies, um, such as skipping meals or reducing meal sizes. Most poor households are likely to have depleted their own produced food stocks and be reliant on seasonally increasing market purchases for food. However, a below normal and erratic start to the rainy season, it will lower access to income 
from agricultural labor opportunities, additionally increased competition for for income from petty trade and self-employment and low demand and low liquidity among better off households will likely constrain household earnings, lowering household purchasing power. Um, similarly, low demand for livestock and livestock products will likely continue to affect livestock sales. Um, despite the increasing need for support, uh, domestic and international remittances are expected to remain below normal as household members in urban areas or abroad contend with high living costs. Um, informal mining is expected to increase across parts of the country, though the number of households engaging in this will remain marginal. From February to March, um, this is a period that is split between the peak of the lean season, which is February and March, and the harvest period, April and May. During February and March crisis IPC phase three outcomes are expected to continue in semi-arid um, areas of southern, eastern, western, and, and extreme northern areas. Um, the green har harvests during this period are expected to be below normal and will not significantly improve household food access. However, uh, between April and May, the likely below average main harvests are expected to, to provide very short-lived improvements in household food access and availability. Uh, most poor households are likely to be able to meet their food needs during this time, supporting area-level stressed IPC phase two outcomes in most typical deficit-producing areas. However, households with a significantly below average harvest will likely remain in crisis IPC phase three. Overall, uh, the projected population in need of humanitarian food assistance is expected to increase from October 2023 to March 2024, peaking between two and a half to three million people, but before declining with the start of the 2024 harvest in April and May. And with that, uh, we'll gladly take questions and I'll leave the regional projected food security outcomes um, up in the time period. Thank you, and I'll end the recording.